You don't have to. Not that no. That's for later. When we need it.
that no
and to then grow a performing group. We were fortunate early on to have the support of Junsan at the Grafton Peace Pagoda, the Smith College Sazanami Club, Alice Young of Ishin Taiko, the group that was here until about 2008, Chris Stetson, who accompanied us in the early years on Shamisen and Shakuhachi, uh, Margaret Sarkeesian of Smith College, the music department, Lori and Paul from the Longmeadow High School Culture Night, and Prescott of the Five Colleges Center for East Asian Studies and the Springfield uh, Riverfront Club and Springfield Dragon Race who hosts the annual Dragon Boat Festival and others who invited us to share Tycho at their events or your events, maybe some of you are here. To the Tycho fans in Williamsburg, the late Candy Black and Shannon Wade of the Bergie Grange, we are grateful for a fantastic local venue for workshops and performances. And now Mountain River Tycho is really excited um, to have a new venue for practices and classes, which is the amazing Bombic Center for Arts and Equity in Florence. Um, and then we'd also like to give a shout out to First Churches Northampton, which was our original show venue. We were going to hold this concert there March 3rd of this year. And well, you know, 
there was another surge and another variant. So here we are now trying to hold this concert in the safest way we could and thank you so much for joining us. Um, that Julie is here vending crooked stick popsicles back there with that cute umbrella. So please do take advantage of her yummy frozen treats over the course of the evening. Um, I know you're eager for some Tyco, but I've got to continue with the thank yous because there are lots of them. I'd like to thank all of the spouses, partners, friends, and family members of our Tyco community who have so graciously shared not only your loved ones, but most, if not all of you, have also volunteered your time and donated your talents um, to helping us over the years. So this includes special shouts out to Bill Kelly, who has constructed nearly all of our Tyco drum stands, um, and Molly Davis, who's created lovely graphics for our Pride Parade and Anniversary shirts from Anniversary um, Media. So if, you're, if you see anybody wearing one of these, kind of sky blue shirts with red um, designs, like the person in the front. That's, uh, that's the work of Molly Davis, and she did it all as a donation. We're so grateful, and we love her artwork. All right. Um, okay, so I'd also very much like to thank our volunteers who have helped us with the venue logistics, lodging, and shiatsu treatments for guests. Um, setting up the concert site, keeping us looking good and hydrated, managing our live stream and capturing video, um, hosting our after party, managing our stage, and more. So I'd like to specifically thank this evening Sal, Abby and Bill, Shunji, Shar, Rini, Andre, Rie, Max, Holly, Ann, Maya, Jackie, Evie, Molly, Erica, Rosie, and Ziha, Brett, and Kazu. Woo! We love you! Go, go, go! So lastly, we're indebted to the generosity of many individuals who made this production possible with their financial support through our Give Butter platform. And we've acknowledged each of you on our website, mountainrivertyco.com. So thank you so very much for your belief in our mission and your contributions that have brought this concert to life. And now, we open with our first, the first song I learned to play in 1998 composed by the originator of modern Japanese ensemble drumming, Oguchi Daihachi, the founder of the group Osawa Taiko in Nagano, Japan. Mr. Oguchi was a jazz drummer who in the 1950s began arranging Japanese drums or taiko into groupings to be played together instead of singly, and thus was born the musical art that so many people around the world have come to love. So this next song, Kiryu-san Dangaishi is beloved by many taiko groups. It calls on a dragon to come visit and not to burn down the community, but to bless the community. So, Kiryu-san Dangaishi!
grapes. Oh, to turn the page when you haven't memorized. <laughs> I know. Okay, so my first encounter with Tycho was in the small southwest community of Moab, Utah. Anybody been there? Yes. Woo! Sometimes. That's a cool place, right? Um, anyway, it was in the mid 1990s and I just fell in love as soon as I saw Tycho. It was a visceral encounter with the vibrations, the colorful costumes, and these women were dancing around their drums, and I just thought, I've got to try this. So that really became a passion for me. And then a life change brought me to Phoenix, Arizona, um, a few years later, where I met the person who was to become my third Tycho teacher, then my good friend, and now a mentor, Esther Vandikar. was able and willing to join us for this anniversary concert. All right, so I'll tell you a little bit about Esther. Esther is a very, very interesting person, and you'll have to like catch her at intermission or something, or you can read a little bit of her bio on our website. But anyway, I'll start off by telling you that Esther lived in Japan from the mid-1980s uh, to the early 1990s in two cities, Matsuyama and Hiroshima. Um, she was there teaching English, and despite norms that excluded women from playing taiko, Esther persisted by showing up to watch classes and asking <laughs> the teacher to let her learn, uh, learn taiko. And eventually she was successful. She was assigned a drum and a student to help her, but she was a really quick study, and so she started to learn the repertoire, and before long she was playing with their professional performing group. Um, what else do I want to tell you about Esther? Well, she moved back to the States, not really because she wanted to leave Japan, but because her parents were aging and they needed her help, and they were in Phoenix. So she moved to Phoenix, Arizona, where she built and opened her own Taiko Dojo, Fushicho Daiko, which means the Phoenix Drummers. Um, and at that Taiko school, she had her own professional performing group. She taught a lot of other um, amateur groups, of which I was one. Uh, in one, and, um, and taught a lot of students from school-aged children and little kids all the way up to, you know, adults at all levels. Um, so Esther was also a foundational member of the committee, the organizing committee for the annual Japanese festival that happens in Phoenix every year called the um, Phoenix Matsuri, which just happens to be the second largest Japanese festival in the United States, oh. um, believe it or not. So anyway, Esther then decided she needed to like take it a little easier. So she retired from Fushicho Daiko in 2011 and moved to Kalamazoo, Michigan to start a Taiko club at Kalamazoo College. <laughs> and she also started her own uh, professional performing group there, Michigan Hiryu Daiko or Dragon Drummers. So. Anyway, as I mentioned, I could share many stories with you about Esther, but we just don't have time this evening. Um, but do go to our website, mountainrivertaiko.com, where you can read uh, biographical info and see more pictures of Esther and other folks here tonight. So, Mountain River Taiko originally played repertoire that I had learned from Esther. Um, and that includes these next two songs. So first we're going to play for you a tune called Silk, which embodies the movements of processing silk fibers. Um, and Esther's English language students in the town of Nomoracho kind of gifted her this taiko song as a thank you for her teaching. Um, Silk will be followed by Shutsu Jin, which is uh, composed by Hatanaka Kenzo in 1979, and it was one of a suite of taiko pieces he composed to commemorate the 90th anniversary of Matsuyama City. So without further ado, we bring you these very different tunes which demonstrate the versatility and range of taiko arts.
Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce you to one of our local guests, my very good friend, Abby Keenan, right up here. Let me go backwards. Abby started learning Taiko in the summer of 2013, and she was a really fast learner. So by the end of her eight-week beginner session, she was learning our repertoire and playing along with the other members. And not only was she one of the first performing ensemble members, but Abby was enthusiastic about road trips to attend special Taiko workshops and conferences. So in fact, I don't think there's anyone with whom I have like attended more events or covered more Tycho Miles with than Abby. <laughs> um, she also, pardon me, frequently surprised me with covers that she designed and sewed for our drums and other equipment. So Abby left us to pursue a range of Japanese musical arts, including the style of Tycho that's played on Hachijo Island off the uh, south coast of Japan, Edo Bayashi, which is a festival of music originating in old Tokyo, and most recently, Abby has been studying and performing the Okinawan drum and dance form called Asa. Um, we are always glad to collaborate with Abby. So, as I mentioned, the repertoire that I began teaching in Mountain River Taiko was comprised of songs I had learned from Esther. And another thing I was introduced to at Esther's school was the opportunity to learn from renowned visiting Taiko performers, including members of the group Kodo, Shigata, the own ensemble, and Kenny Endo, who donated uh, merchandise to our fundraiser in support of this concert. And he recently played here at UMass. Some of you may have seen him in April. So these workshops exposed me to different styles of playing and teaching Taiko arts. And because the Pioneer Valley is so far from like urban centers like Boston or New York, where those teachers and artists would normally um, you know, um, provide classes, I invited them to come here, and we were really fortunate that um, that they came. Um, all of the teachers we invited came, and one of the first who came was Tiffany Tamari Bucci, who is sitting up there uh, in the shade. And I first met her um, in my early years of Taiko when she was a visiting instructor uh, for um, Moab Taiko Dan, and then she later became the sensei for that group. Tiffany first came here to Williamsburg as a guest teacher in 2015, and she came every year thereafter until we couldn't do it because of the pandemic. Um, Tiffany is a world-recognized Odaiko artist, especially known for her skill and art on the large drum, except the ones that she is recognized for are like two or three or four times as big as these. Um, um, yeah, so that's called the Odaiko. Anyway, opportunities to study Odaiko are kind of infrequent unless you travel to a conference. So we asked her to help us learn to play this type of taiko. And to help us develop Odaiko skills, Tiffany composed the next song we'll play this evening, which is called Kitsunebi, or Foxfire. Um, so I'd like to give you some more information about Tiffany and a more formal introduction. So she's really my Taiko instructor, my mentor, a friend, and a trailblazer and world-renowned, loved and respected teacher and performer. Um, so, hey Tiffany out there. So Tiffany has applied determination, perseverance, and passion to create a powerful new voice in what was largely a male-dominated art form of taiko, and even more so the community of odaiko players. And oh my gosh, we our other special guest, I'm seeing his odaiko stand. He walked down the sidewalk, sorry, I'm going off the uh, queue uh, here. But anyway, uh, exciting things to come this evening. So anyway, to get back to Tiffany, she really it endured grueling hours of taiko study in order to develop the mastery and skill that she has attained now. So she was a member of the Japanese um, group Onde Koza, with which she has toured the world. And she's also the founder of Sacramento Taiko Don, which is a community-based group, where she's welcomed and taught people of all ages taiko technique and her many compositions since 1989, as well as uh, holding an annual Odaiko intensive workshop. They are called Taiko Baka. Tiffany formed and coordinates Joe Daiko, an exclusively women's taiko ensemble, which performs at events focused on 
um, women's issues, and embodying strong and commanding images, Joe Dyko's voice awakens a sense of self-empowerment for women, both as performers and as spectators, and I would say for all people, probably. So, um, we're going to move on and play this song, Kitsunebi, that Tiffany um, composed for us to help us learn, and that's going to be followed uh, by the last song before our intermission, and that last song is called Kawamoto, uh, it was taught to us by a former colleague of mine in Phoenix who had taught high school at, uh, I, she didn't teach high school, she taught English at a high school in the city of Kawamoto. And so they shared this song with her and she shared it with us. So thank you. Come on.
Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So this concludes the first half of our show, and um, we'll be back in exactly 20 minutes. So please get up and stretch. If you haven't had a popsicle or gotten something to eat, left something in your car, feel free to get it. There are restrooms behind you. I'll point out that there's only one per side, so it's kind of slow going. So if you see a performer, somebody wearing one of these costumes, heading for the bathroom, and if you're able to let them cut ahead of you, <laughs> otherwise, thank you so much, and we'll see you in 20 minutes. Hello, Risa. Hello, Claire. Hello, Butch. Hello. Hello, Etienne. Hello, little Mike. Two, three hour long practices with this power bank. So I'm, I think we're pretty good. 
I, I just told her she was like, oh, that would be awful. <laughs> it's okay. Um, we, you know, we're, this is new for us, so it's not like we have you know, thousands of people watching. But, um, oh, yep. We've got yep. some really important people. <laughs> Great! That's you know, what time is it? Twelve o'clock at night. Oh my god! Thank you! <laughs> he says he loves it. Oh, that's so good. I'm so glad that we could get this up for him. You know, we've like, never done this sort of technology stuff. Yeah. Really cool. It's so much more of a thing now. Yeah. So thank you so much for stepping yeah. in. Yeah. You're welcome. Really. Yeah, no problem. You should probably go have a break. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> uh, I didn't want to ask, are you going to the after party? Yeah. Do you know what, are you driving south to the after party or something? Oh, they all should come. Well, I don't know. We can, yeah, they want. I think it's an item that I should say. Yeah, deliver to the after party. I'm going to assume it to my own after party. Okay, I'm going to go get it. We want it to deliver to the after party. Or you just deliver them like this. I think that they can.
むっちゃ明るいよね絶対あっちあの iPhone のあの映像が綺麗だ。
Um, at the time, Sheeta was playing electric bass with the first world movement band, Ogi Ocha. And Shido is a self-taught musician who grew up in post-World War II Tokyo, um, influenced by iconic musical artists like the Beatles, Bob Marley, and John Coltrane. When he moved to California in his 20s, he met and began to collaborate with jazz and rock musicians in the San Francisco Bay Area, gigging regularly with Kenny Endo and Makoto Horiuchi and G. Goku. And he also worked as a recording artist in Tokyo and the U.S. at that time. Shido later moved to New York, um, to the Lower East Side, where he gigged with the reggae band Funda Vida. And in 2010, Shido moved here to the Pioneer Valley and shifted his musical focus then to composing, playing, and recording digital music. Currently, he creates songs playing bass and synthesizer, combined with sounds that he and others have sampled. Locally, Shido has played bass with the late Charles Neville and his son Khalif, and composed and played live music for sculptor Thomas Matsudo's Purification Series. And you can listen to Shido's hundreds of compositions, that, that's the correct number, <laughs> on SoundCloud, and you can find more information about him on our website. Um, so last year, Shido invited us to play percussion for one of his digital songs which he had composed especially for this event. Um, you can be sure that we were just a little intimidated about this collaboration, but it's been a really wonderful, interesting, fun challenge for us, and we believe we're up to it now. So that song, Sanga, or Mountain River, will follow Eileen's Fue. Eileen is going to play for us um, Kojo no Tsuki, or Moon Over the Abandoned Catholic.
composed by a contemporary uh, Japanese um, artist. Uh, first, we share with you the piece uh, Yui by Ryo Shimamoto. Yui served really as an anchor for us during the first year of the pandemic. When the stay-at-home mandate was issued, we immediately decided to continue meeting weekly and practicing as a group using Zoom, even though we, didn't, we knew it would be a challenge. But we also knew that the challenge of not needing to play taiko. How's that? Yeah? Sorry. Yeah. We also knew the challenge, hi Pat, <laughs> of not needing to play taiko would be like far more disappointing than just trying to deal with a lag and other things. So. Anyway, but the story of our success at continuing to play together during the pandemic, um, first exclusively online, and then during the warm weather, we were able to meet outside. Um, that really is due in large part to Miho Family. Okay, so um, anyway. Um, yeah, she is. Yes, we love Miho. Miho started playing Taiko with Gendo Taiko at Brown University. Um, and then she joined us here a few years later in 2015. Uh, in the year leading up to the pandemic, I had been mentoring her um, and teaching Taiko so she could begin shouldering some of the group's responsibilities. And Miho applied all of that and far exceeded our expectations by uh, developing new and really fun learning activities that we could actually be successful with, you know, via Zoom. Um, so that was really special. And that culminated in us learning this next song, Yui, which we each videoed um, on our own at home, and then Miho edited it together into a virtual recital for us. Um, she's also helped us refine the song Yama Arashi, which was composed by another visiting instructor from Tokyo, Kenji Furutate. Some of you might have seen him play at the Grange in Williamsburg a couple of times. Yama Arashi means mountain storm, and Miho taught us parts of the song and composed new elements to kind of help us expand what I call our stormy expression. Um, so, many of you also know that I moved away from Massachusetts last summer, and I'm very pleased that Miho has accepted the role of group leader and teacher going forward. I'm not even, this is the short list. In 2021, she was accepted into the inaugural cohort of the North American Psycho Community Alliance Leadership Program. And so Miho will lead efforts uh, later this year to make our group more sustainable by becoming a not-for-profit organization, so stay tuned for that. Um, so now let's celebrate her teaching with Yui and Yama Arashi.
Absolutely. <laughs> totally.
Go Tyco! for me. This is the last time that I'll play with Mountain River Tyco for the foreseeable future. I love playing with these dedicated, kind, hardworking Tyco friends. I'd like to now introduce the remaining members of MRT. Lynn Davis. She felt like she was in elementary school music class, having a great time making loud noise. She says, quote, little did I know how much I'd also enjoy the group dynamic and performance aspects of Tycho, with Pride Parade being my standout favorite event. Quote. Lynn is looking forward to the ongoing growth of Mountain River Tycho. Lena loves the fun, the heart, the beat, the connection to Japanese culture and traditions and the evolving current Taiko world. She started in the same beginner's class with Lynn in January of 2015, and she loves her Taiko twin sister and the whole MRT family. Lena was born in Japan, and she lived there for much of her 20s and 30s, during which time her children were born and I believe one of her children is here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> All the way from Hawaii. Um, so Lena loves having such a joyful connection to Japan in her daily life here. And she, now you know, she recently became a grandmother and she plans to share Taiko with her grandchildren. So, Tim is a software developer, a potter, and a handbell director living in Amherst. His first exposure to Tycho uh, was at a workshop at a handbell festival in 2011, which introduced him to the combination of rhythm, physicality, and the culture of Tycho. After seven years of ringing handbells with New England ringers and wanting to explore Tycho more, he found Mountain River Tycho in 2018 and has been enjoying playing Tycho with this, quote, wonderful group of people. <laughs> All right, so you can learn more about each of our guests on our website where you can view a short slideshow and some brief biographies. And now I would like to introduce our very special surprise guest from the Northern Kingdom. Uh, this uh, Stuart Payton, of, of Burling, the founder of Burlington Tyco Group in Burlington, Vermont. You've been playing Tycho for what, 35 years, 40 years? A long, long time. Tycho age is 37. Woo! Woo! <laughs> so I will, I'm going to let um, Stuart introduce himself because he's got a lot of interesting things to say that I couldn't tell you, but I will tell you that he is um, known to thousands of Tycho players fondly as Stuart先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先生。先
I was born in Connecticut, but I grew up in Tokyo. And let's see, it's my pleasure to be part of Sangha Taiko's 10th anniversary concert. Um, this is the lion dance. This lion will do a dance to bring good luck, and it will go into the audience and nibble on people for good luck. <laughs> and the lion likes to eat oranges. Um, it also likes to eat paper money. Um, it's optional. And um, if you don't want to be nibbled by the lion, please make a no thank you X, and the lion will have time to visit a few people in the audience. So from old Tokyo, before it was called Tokyo, uh, before it was called Tokyo, um, it is Edo. This is part of the Edobayashi material. This is Shishi.
Let's see, I'm going to get a little bit of breath back before the next piece. Let's see. Um, Shishimai. The next piece is Yodan Uchi from Tokyo. See, I grew up in Tokyo. I saw Aiko perform on television in my living room. Um, the live Taiko performance I saw after I came to the States. 1968, Skiroku Daiko from Tokyo had a three week tour in San Francisco. They played this piece each night. The Tanaka Sensei, um, my teacher, Tanaka Sensei, then went to the show. Went to the show and he memorized the piece from watching the three weeks of performance. This next piece from Tokyo from the Skeroku Taikoku, Yodan Uchi.
Japan is famous for festivals. They happen seasonally, um, and summer festivals are a big thing. So anyway, this tune, the main tune that you'll hear played on the barrel drum, called the Chudaiko or Nagado Daiko, that main tune um, came from Matsuyama City, and Esther brought that back. And Mountain River kind of took some liberties of, to make this into a more complex song, because these kinds of um, uh, rhythms that you'll hear on that one on that one drum are typically played very slowly uh, in the center of a square with a tower where there's maybe one or two drummers at most and around them all of you instead of sitting here watching us would be up dancing Woo! in a circle around or multiple circles around the tower right so that's more more typical for how a festival song uh, would take place. So we decided to add our own kind of skipping dancing into this and some additional backbeat rhythms um, to make it our own. And then we're really, really fortunate that Eileen Morgan also composed a beautiful Fue accompaniment to it, so it has the flute music. Um, so anyway, we're going to end with this, and it's super duper fun. If you feel motivated to move, to get up and dance around, or jump around, or spring around, uh, feel free to like follow Ellen, who's going to be. Ellen has a special, uh, a special, uh, sorry, <laughs> special, a special implement for fun called a mat toy, um, which was made famous, I mean, I think in like stage taiko music, probably by uh, Kodo and their dancers. There are many other traditional uses of matoi, uh, which we won't talk about tonight. But anyway, get up, dance around, have fun if you want to, and please enjoy Mountain River Matsuri.
because I'd like our volunteers, volunteers, you know who you are, there's a lot of them, please, please, please head down here, um, and Rie, um, uh, thank you, so would you please, if you volunteered here today, please come join Sal and Abby and Rie.
and say you might be wondering like how are we even connected but uh, right before COVID happened um, VA started an Okinawan drum and dance um, uh, in the Boston area and I was like oh my gosh I want to do that so anyway I studied with her and um, her husband Max and Yumi um, Yumi was twin at the time. We started at the same time and we practiced together, so this is super special. Um, thank you so much for